Good morning and welcome to a brand new Day Ticket Diaries. Today you join me on the banks of Brasenose 1. I came down last night before the cameras and I was able to catch a couple of fish throughout the hours of darkness. Now the complex is fairly busy, we're mid to back end of November now, so what I'm going to do is reel them rods in, have a look on a few of the other lakes, see if there's any better opportunities, but over the next couple of nights hopefully I'll be able to land a few fish for the cameras. Location is 100% the biggest key factor in carp fishing and when you're turning up to linear it can be quite hard to land straight on the fish. It's more than likely you're going to have to take your time walking around, speaking to people, putting buckets in swims and sort of just figuring out where it's going to be the best start to your session. It's no good just jumping in an empty peg just because it's empty or a big peg because it's going to look good with your bivvy. You want to make sure that you spend your time locating where the carp are and I suppose it's a little bit different to if you were to rock upon your syndicate. If you rock upon your syndicate you can find the fish fairly easy, it might be fairly quiet, you can just rock up and start fishing but you might have to wait a day or two until someone leaves but that's definitely a key advice making sure you start your session in a good peg. I'm back in the peg after walking around the complex. We took a nice detailed walk around St John's and to be fair, there were a few pegs available, but I've decided we're gonna be here on Brasenose One. Now Brasenose One is what I'd probably say is a typical day ticket venue. It's on the linear fisheries complex, 32 acres in size. And yeah, to say it gets busy would be an understatement. But to be honest, I absolutely love this style of fishing. It's about 12 to 14 foot in depth all across the lake and big hits can be had on this venue. The stock in Brasenose 1 to me, quite frankly, it's incredible. When I started fishing this complex around six years ago, Brasenose 1 didn't really stand out to me because the stock, it wasn't that impressive. It was mainly full of 10 to 15 pounders. But as more and more anglers hit the banks and there's more bait going in, them fish have absolutely piled on the weight. In here, it's 32 acres. And in this lake, you've got probably 1,900 fish. That figure might be even higher with a good average size of a mid-20. There's plenty of 30s. And to be honest, the figures are always changing, but I'd estimate there to be around 15 to 20 different known 40 pounders. And we go up to 50 pounds with a couple just underneath there. So yeah, the stock is incredible and we're just gonna carry on growing. And trust me, in a few years time, this venue is gonna be full of absolute monsters. When I turned up in the peg yesterday, I decided to take my time finding the perfect spot for the session. There was a really strong wind yesterday and Brasenose 1 is a big lake and I could have fished out in the middle, but with that wind, I don't think I would have been accurate enough. And to be honest, I would have probably annoyed the guy to my left as all my leads and spawns would have been landing in his water. So I decided to take my time and I found a nice spot at 22 and a half wraps. Now I'd spoke to the guy who was fishing in this peg previous and he was fishing at 22 wraps and at 22 wraps there's a nice bit of gravel. After speaking to the guy he caught a couple of fish however I did notice that he put a fair bit of bait in and I didn't want to go putting rigs and bait on top of old bait so what I've decided to do is fish just past the bar. The reason for this is he's obviously caught in that area so the fish feel comfortable and also I feel like it was just something a little bit different compared to people fishing left and right with me. So that's exactly what I've done. 22 and a half wraps, put all three rods out there and a few spots over the top. So the mix that I'm using on this session is a mix that I'd probably class as a typical linear mix and I'm going to run through that mix and the reason why I use the ingredients now. So the first thing that I add into the mix is hemp. Hemp's a great particle, it gets to the bottom and more importantly it keeps the fish grubbing around coming back for more. As I mentioned, there's a load of fish in Brasenose 1 and the last thing that I want to do is put out a kilo of barleys because there's not that many food items. But with hemp, it's going to keep them grubbing back, increasing the chance of a hook bait being picked up. Next into the mix, I had tiger nut slush. Now this is great as I don't have to sit there chewing my own tiger nuts. It's already done for me in one jar. I also like adding this into the mix as it acts as a bit of a visual element once on the bottom. And just like the hemp, it keeps the fish grubbing around for a long period of time. To help out with the visual element, I've also added sweet corn into the mix. I've then added Scopex Squid whole barleys in 6ml Scopex Squid pellets. Now the reason why I'm using these in a whole form is because they're heavy and it's quite open and windswept on Brasenose 1, but making sure I've got whole items such as the barleys in the mix 
will make sure that these sink nice and accurate on the spot without drifting away. Now I have added a little bit of Scopex grid flake but not a lot and like I mentioned since Brazen Nose 1 is such a big windswept gravel pit I feel like if I put loads of flake in it and it's quite windy like it is today I feel like that flake would just drift off the spot and I wouldn't be fishing accurate enough. Now we're moving into the colder months and I know that a lot of you guys will know that maggots are a great winter bait. Unfortunately down here that linear maggots are banned, you can use them on the hook bait or in PVA mesh bags but you're not allowed to spod them out. But that doesn't mean that you can't use other natural baits within your spod mix such as blood worm or worm. And that's exactly what I've done, I've added a few worms into the spod mix chopped up and the reason why I've done this is I just feel like it will give my spod mix a natural edge moving into the colder months and help draw them carving. Once I made the mix, I put around a kilo of bait out onto the spot. Now, a lot of people might think a kilo isn't really a lot of bait considering how many carp are in here. But what I'm hoping is, since I've only put out a kilo, if the fish aren't really up for a feed, it's more than enough to get them down, get a bite or two, and then I'll act accordingly. If I catch a couple of fish over the kilo of bait, I'll put a bit more in to try and establish the spot and keep the fish coming back for more. I think it's really important not to put all your eggs in one basket, fill it in to only find out the fish aren't really up for a feed or if they're all down the other end of the lake. I certainly feel like bait's a key feature in holding the fish in the swim. As I mentioned, they move around in a show, there's 40 odd anglers normally on here and they're all putting out good quality bait and you want to hold that show in your swim for as long as possible. So making sure that you're putting it nice and tight and using small particles such as the tiger nut slush, such as the hemp, it's going to keep the fish grubbing around there. You're going to be able to get bites and every time you get a fish in the net, put a couple of spots just to hold them in the area. A lot of people watching this film might be thinking, God, if I'm going brazen on this one, I'm going to have to fill it in. That isn't always the case, but it is likely if the fish turn up on you, you're going to have to use a lot of bait. And a lot of people can think, it's going to be expensive, we're going to have to buy this, that, the other. But to be fair, you can bulk out your spot mix with sweet corn. Sweet corn is readily available in supermarkets. You can get bags of tins for fairly cheap with a little bit of liquid. I feel like that's going to maximise my bait for my money. I'm not having to spend thousands of pounds on a bait mix. I've got a mix there that's going to keep the fish grubbing about without breaking the bank. It's been a couple of hours now and what I'm going to do, since it's November, the nights are getting longer and longer and the days are going shorter and today's absolutely flown by. So what I'm going to do is reel these rods in now, have a bit of a freshen up, new rigs, new hook bait and make sure they're bang on the money for the hours of darkness. As I mentioned, the nights are getting longer and the last thing I want to be doing is being tucked up nice and warm in bed thinking, did I really try my hardest? Did I actually put effort in making sure the rods are on the spot? So that's exactly what I'm going to do, get them rods out on the spot with maximum effort, giving me 100% confidence. My biggest piece of advice for anyone fishing braised nose is it's a busy day to get water. There's people opposite you, there's people always watching you, what you're doing, when you're catching, when you're casting out, what you're baiting up with. The main thing is just go fishing for yourself. Yes, people are going to be watching, and I think it'd be quite easy to think, oh, they're judging me, I haven't hit the clip, oh no. And if you let it get to your head, you're not going to be fishing as effectively or as efficient as possible. Like, no one's perfect, you don't always hit the cliff, but that's just life, you've just got to crack on with it. If you haven't hit the cliff, reel it in, redo it again. It's currently very early on in the morning, it's probably about one o'clock, and I'm pleased to say that I've just landed the first one. Now, like I said, it's very early on in the morning and I think a lot of people would have been tempted once we got the fish in the net to just sort of mess about, maybe not even cast the rod back out and just go back in the bed and trust me, I really want to get back in the bed because it's nice and warm but it's important on venues like this, as I mentioned earlier, they move around in a show and although I've only caught one, there's definitely more fish out there to be had. So what I've done is quickly just unhooked the fish, put it in the retainer for 10-15 minutes I put three spots back over the top and I've just put the rod back out. It was the middle rod, so it was a bit of a task to get it out in the dark, but using a tree line marker, I'm pretty sure we're bang on the money and hopefully it's not going to be the final one of the night. 
and here she is in all her glory, a 23 and a half pound linear to kickstart the session. It's around one o'clock in the morning and the middle rod's just tanked off with this beauty on the end. But it's actually on a pink citrus wafter topped off with maggots, but I'll talk more about hook baits in the morning. But for now, I'm gonna get this one slip back and get back to bed. But fingers crossed, I'll be getting out of bed shortly after with another fish or two on the end. When turning up to any day ticket venue up and down the country, it's really important to set yourself a target which is realistic. With social media, you can see on Facebook and you can see on Instagram that such and such came down to Brazenose one and he caught 10 carp, or such and such went to another venue and he caught 50 carp. If you come to a venue with that idea that you're going to catch 50 carp, I'm not going to lie, it's rare that sessions come around like that. You've got to come with an open mind. It might be fishing tricky or it might be fishing easy, but just set yourself the target of catching one carp and then go from there. It's first light now and looking out across the lake, it's fairly foggy. However, it's been a productive night. I was able to catch one in the night and just on first light, I've been able to get another one into the net. So yeah, it's going good. Ideally though, I was gonna move on the other side this morning. I know a few lads over there and they've been catching a few. And I feel like if we could get a peg over there, I'd definitely be within a shout of catching a few more. I went round there this morning quickly, but as is the way with linear fisheries, it's busy. People have already been round with buckets and I'm gonna stay in this peg as I can't jump over there. But I'm not complaining as I've been able to get a couple of bites and the spot's definitely established, but enough of me talking. Let's get this one out and let's see how the rest of the day plans out. And there's our morning prize. I think you'll agree that this one is an absolute stunner. I think a lot of people think Grey's Nose one is just sort of filled up with big fat plain mirrors, but if you're catching a few fish, there's every chance one of these stunners will pop up at the landing net. Like I said, I had two fish last night and interestingly, both of them were on pink hook bait. So definitely, as the session progresses, I'm gonna move all three rods onto pink hook bait as that definitely seems to be doing the damage. But let's get this one slipped back. The fog's just starting to lift, so I'm gonna redo the rods, make sure they're absolutely on the money, and hopefully it won't be too long till one of them bobbins rips off again. So this is the rig that I've been using here on the session on Braze Nose 1 and it's a rig that I've got 100% confidence with and I'd take it to any venue such as B1 or any other popular day ticket in the country. All it is is a simple blowback rig and I'll run through the reasons why I use the rig now. So the first reason why I like using this rig is it's super simple to tie. So if you're on Braze Nose 1 like we are here today and you're catching multiple carp and you want to get that rig back out on the spot super quick. It only takes a few seconds to knock one of these rigs up. All you have to do is shrink the shrink tube over the kettle and you're ready to get the rig back out on the spot first time of asking. I also like this rig because it's so versatile and you can fish different hook baits on the rig. You can fish a bottom bait, a wafter or a pop-up. All you have to do if you're fishing a pop-up is put a little bit of putty or a split shot underneath the hook just to balance the rig perfect. So as I've already mentioned, I'm using pink on this session. At the start of any session, I'll put all the rigs out on different hook baits and this will allow me to work out which hook bait or colour is working on the day. And on this session, it's been the pink, so all I've got here is a 12mm Scopex squid wafter to match the boilies that I'm putting out in the mix, topped off with a little bit of pink plastic straight corn. The hook link material that I'm using on this session is 15 pound skin link in stiff. Now there's a reason why I'm using the stiff and that's because there's a lot of carp in Braze Nose 1 and odds on when a car picks up your rig, you're not gonna hook everything that picks up your hook bait and it's more than likely you're gonna get done. So when a car picks up the rig, if it does spit it out, with the stiff element of the rig, it's gonna kick out the hook bait perfect, making sure that I'm presented and I'm not gonna be sat there thinking, is the rig tangled or is it sitting funny? I know with that stiff element, it's gonna be sat perfect every time that I'm done until eventually I'm lucky and I hook a carp bang on for bottom lip. I'm using the silicon on this session because when I'm reeling in the rod, if I haven't had a bite, I can use the silicon as a bit of an indicator as to what's going on on the spot. Now, when carp are feeding on the spot, as mentioned, you might get done, but with that silicon, if you get done, it will also get pushed back to the eye of the hook. So when I reel in, if it's been done, I know that I can change something on the rig. That might be a heavier lead, I might shorten the rig, or just act accordingly on what I feel like will work best on the day. 
this rig is super simple to tie. All I've done is attach the hook, knotless knot style, and on the eye of the hook, I've got a little bit of string tube, and this is fish liner liner style. The battery rig in all its glory, nice and basic, and I think it's important when you're fishing lakes like Brazen on this one to keep rigs simple as most people overcomplicate things. All you have to do is cast something like this out and I can guarantee you a bite won't be too far away. I've got a map of Grey's Nose 1 on my phone and what I'm going to do now is give you a virtual guide tour around the lake and show you guys the areas that I'd like to fish. So how big is Grey's Nose 1? Grey's Nose 1 is 32 acres in size and has around 40 pegs on the lake and the average depth out there is around 12 to 14 foot and to be honest apart from one area which I'm going to mention the, the depth doesn't really change that much it's pretty much even all across the lake. The first area that I'm going to talk about is the shallow plateau. This can be found in between pegs one and two and it's a great area in the summer months as since it's only around one to two foot on the top the water warms up really quick and the carp absolutely love it, that area. Apart from that plateau that's the only area that there's a real visible depth change. The rest of the lake is probably around 12 to 14 foot as mentioned and since Bray's Nose 1 is quite uniform in shape the middle zone can be a great area and a lot of carp can be found out there. If I was looking to fish in this area, I'd try and target peg 6 to 10 or 25 to 31 as these pegs control the middle zone of the lake and if you can get a rig out there in the middle at any time of year this can be a great area to nick a couple of bites. Today we're fishing on the north bank and on this bank you can find a gravel bar running between pegs 24, 25 all the way up to 30. This is around 20 to 22 wraps out depending on which swims you're fishing. Now this feature isn't a bar as such, it's still 12 to 14 foot in depth just like the rest of the lake. However, it's a nice strip of gravel with the odd patch here and there and this is a great area to present your rigs as A, you know that the lake bed's nice and clear but B, most anglers fish to this feature so the carp know there's always going to be food in and around that area. Wind can have a massive impact on where the fish turn up on the lake. If there's a warm wind on the lake, I'd certainly be looking to get on the end of that wind because if I was a carp, that's the area where I'd like to be as it's where the water is going to be the warmest. If there is a cold wind, I'd look on the back of the wind. On this session, we've had a southwesterly. It has been a little bit nippy and as a result, the fish have been holding on the back of the wind a little bit. So when you're turning up to the lake, just take the weather into consideration and I'm sure that if you think it through, have a walk around, you won't be too far away from locating them carp. As mentioned, Brazenose 1 contains over 40 pegs and just like any other day ticket in the country, a more so linear fisheries, it can get very busy. Now, with the angling pressure, the fish do move out into that middle zone, but if there's an area where there's less lines in the water, the carp are going to move into that area as they'll feel safe. So if you do see a few pegs empty and you see a couple of fish crashing in that area, I'd recommend jumping in one of them pegs and maybe chucking out a couple of zigs or just a couple of solid bags and trying to nick a bite that way. At the end of the day, carp are wild animals, so I wouldn't take everything that I've just said there as gospel. It's all about coming down to the lake, speaking to people, using watercraft and seeing what the carp are doing on the day, weather depending and what the angling pressure is doing. I hope that this fishery in focus have gave you guys a better understanding what to expect when turning up to Brazenose 1. So we're coming to the end of the day now and to be honest it's been a fairly quiet day. There's been the odd fish coming out on the lake but nothing nothing massive to report, no one's really having it off. Reasons why I think it's maybe been a bit slow today, the sky's been crystal clear, it's been flat calm and to be honest with it being quite an open lake when there's a bit of wind on it, fish is a little bit better. So yeah it's been a bit calm, nothing really happening but in the last hour or so I have started seeing fish show in a similar area to where they were shown yesterday evening so I'm fairly confident we're going to have a similar result as to last night so yeah I'm just going to top up the swim now sit back probably order a takeaway and hopefully at some point tonight we'll be awoken and I'll be able to hold up a car for the cameras I've managed to get a bite and to be fair, it's ready for netting, which came in quite easy, but it looks like we're getting them a bit nice and early. It's about half eight. Happy days, first one of the night. 
I managed to get the first bite tonight a lot earlier than last night, which is a good sign. Probably say it's half eight, quarter to nine. And yeah, left hand is just pulled up tight. There's a few fish showing out there. It's absolutely freezing cold, but I don't care because we've got a carp in the bottom of the landing net. Look at that funny looking character. A big, fat, chunky, brazen nose one mirror. It's around half eight, quarter to nine, and it looks like the fish have turned up on the bait earlier than we were expecting. Around 20 minutes before this bite, I had a liner on the middle rod, and I had a sneaky feeling it wasn't going to be too long until one of those rods ripped off, and that's exactly what just happened. The left hand has just pulled up tight, and we've been able to get the first one of the night. And fingers crossed, it's not going to be the last one. I think the favourite thing about Bay One is when that rod goes, you don't know what's going to be on the end. It could be 20 pounds all the way up to 50 pounds. And every time that alarm goes, you sort of have that little kid inside you thinking, is it the 50 pounder? Is it going to be a 40 pounder? And I find that really exciting about Bay One. Four A's wise in this lake is quite incredible. Figures are always changing with the amount of bait going and the fish are always growing. This year, Bay One's produced its first 50. Four A's wise, it's hard to put a figure on. I'd definitely say there's around the 20 mark, but that figure, like I said, it's always changing. There's so many upper 30s, and at the right time of year, well, in a couple of years, you just, yeah, there's gonna be so many 40s in there. It's quite incredible for a day ticket venue. If I was someone trying to break a personal best, maybe catch my first 30 pounder or 40 pounder, B1 is probably the venue on the linear complex and if not probably the best venue in the UK that's going to give you that opportunity for a day ticket to have access to the size of carp that in here. I don't think you can beat it. And what a way to kickstart our morning here at Bray's Nose One. Just like yesterday, first light, the left hand is just pulled up tight and we've been able to catch this. No 20 mirror, it's an absolutely stunning carp and I'm buzzing to catch it. We've landed four carp now. Last night was a little bit quiet. I did actually have a bite around two o'clock, but unfortunately it fell off. But I got the rod back out there and I'm glad I did because I was rewarded with this one on first light. Yeah, I'm gonna put the fish back now. We've got a few hours of the session remaining. So let's see how the rest of the session goes. But if not, this is the perfect way to end our session here on Brazenos One. Throughout the sessions, the weather's changed quite a lot. At the start of the session, it was really windy. Now, it's flat calm, high pressure. And I'm only fishing 20, well, I say only, 22 and a half laps is still a big chuck for anyone. But on B1, you can fish in the middle, but I feel like if I started that way, fishing out in the middle with the wind, bait and presentation, casting my rigs would have been shocking. So I feel like picking a nice, comfortable distance has been key to the success in this session. While I've been down here on Bray's Nose One, there's been plenty of big carp getting caught up and down the lake, and it sort of inspired me to do a bit more time over the winter, and who knows, one of them biggins might not be too far away.